Hi, my name is Eric Newman. There's five of you here, so it's time for my Don't Have Kids, a very persuasive appeal. Did you know that, according to a U.S. Department of Agriculture study, a middle-income married couple with two children is estimated to spend about $23,610. A $10, this part that gets you, costs vary by family income level, of course, and by location. Lower income families are estimated to spend about $175,000, while high income households will pay around $375,000 over the years. And none of those figures include the cost of college attendance, which is about $40,000 for private and $20,000 for public. Tax deductions for children need to be eliminated. If we eliminate those tiny incentives for people to have children, they just might not have them. And they might be able to enjoy the rest of their lives free of misery. Nobody is saving any money from the tax deductions. It's a function to perpetuate the economic machine our country has become. That's not a bad thing, it's just how the world works. But why not harness that economic potential for yourself? Why not enjoy everything the world has to offer? Why get bogged down? There's already enough things you have to commit to. Cell phone contracts, loans, a career, finding the one. And then there are your own interests. When there's enough time for that, doesn't anybody want to travel the world anymore? There are unsubstantiated claims that having children can be one of the most rewarding experiences life has to offer. And while of course having children is the one thing that perpetuates our race, it is, as we can all probably agree, best left to a qualified few. But notice that wording though, most rewarding. The wording is never, it's funnest, most enjoyable, and it's certainly never happiest. In fact, back in 2004, the Nobel Prize winning economist Daniel Kahneman uh, and happiest researcher did a study involving 900 women who were mothers and had jobs as well in Texas. He asked people to reconstruct their activities from the previous day and rated how happily they felt while doing those activities. Things like talking on the phone to friends, sleeping, watching TV, etc. They also asked the women to rate their enjoyment of the time spent with their children. And when they got the results back, it turns out that women don't really like raising kids all that much. Um, in fact, the only things that scored lower than spending time with their kids was their morning commute, their evening commute, and working. Um, doing household chores actually scored higher than spending time with their kids. That is to say that cleaning up after your kids is more enjoyable than your children themselves. Now, that probably just speaks to the caliber of their children, but this definitely shows that parents are more unhappy than their childless counterparts. Really, the most positive the happiness research gets in favor of having children is best summed up by the social scientist Natahud Patawi. Over the past few decades, social scientists like me, I'm quoting here, have found consistent evidence that there is almost zero association between having children and happiness. And that's based on a study he did in London which compared the relative happiness of parents and non-parents and established that they were kind of the same. And then he did a study a few years later using data sets from both Europe and America that was published in the online journal of the British Psychological Association. Patawi admits that, on aggregate, parents often report statistically significantly lower levels of happiness, life satisfaction, marital satisfaction, and mental well-being compared with non-parents. So, if you're going to have kids, just remember, studies show you'll at most be just as happy if you don't. Um, that doesn't sound so promising now, does it? Uh, and there's a widespread belief in most cultures that children do bring happiness. Patawi says that when people are asked to think about parenthood, they often conjure up pictures of healthy babies, handsome boys, and gorgeous girls who are flawless in every way. And this is the case even when the prospective parents know that raising a child will be painstakingly difficult. They tend to think quite happily about parenthood, which is why most of them eventually leap into it. And that leap could cost you a whole lot of happiness. Someone once said that the duty of a legislator is to do the right thing for his constituents, not the thing they necessarily want. Besides, the paltry offerings the government dishes out are laughable. According to the IRS.gov website, the maximum tax credit for a child is $3,000, and I don't think anyone gets that much off. But even if the government generously shelled out $3,000 in tax credits per year, that barely puts a meaningful dent in the amount of money it takes to raise offspring. 
like, uh, what is it, your fourth kid's supposed to be free? Um, and in a time when more and more countries are starting to look at metrics that aren't GDP like gross national happiness, it makes sense to institute a policy approach such as this to stop encouraging people to make a decision they can't afford and might not even be good for them. We must eliminate the tax credit for children or raise it dramatically, but probably eliminate it because of the burden people are on the earth. Uh, but either would help to satisfy the growing dissatisfaction among parents. And while children are cheaper by the dozen, that does little to address the ecological factors. Another child is more than just another mouth to feed. It's another mouth to leave the lights on, to drive around, and take up space and traffic. And when value is determined by scarcity, are we undermining our own self-worth by making ourselves so common? According to a Pew Research poll, by 2065, America will have another 100 million people at least. And I don't know about you, but I'm much happier when my morning commute is light on traffic and my money is in the bank. Thank you for listening. And do you have any questions? Oh, yeah, what's up? What's your position on adoption? Um, that it's, um, wow, the adoption is great. I've known people that were adopted and they're totally happy that they didn't grow up in the foster care system. So, yeah, adoption is really good. What's up? Um, do you know of any countries that have like a, like intentionally like removed like a child tax credit and that it's population growth as far as birth is? Well, the, the uh, example that comes foremost to mind would be China, who have done much more than just um, tax-based policies on how they deal with their population. They actively, um, they, for example, I found a lot of research that was all from China about why having kids makes you unhappy and how your career suffers. So I really get the sense that their government funds a lot of the research trying to convince people of that because that was one of their policy positions for, um, uh, at least a decade, I believe, that they could only have one child per couple, and then they finally expanded it to two. Yeah, yes? Uh, I'm just wondering um, how you expect to further this vein with <clears throat> the legislatures, the le legislators. I mean, you know, the idea that you would remove the tax credit, it just seems so foreign. Right, right. Well, um, it is, it, it's not exactly a leap, but I can see how you could see it was one. It, it actually makes perfect sense that, um, well, if you eliminate the tax credit, then people will no longer hear that age old incentive that, uh, for example, it is common knowledge, I know it, you know it, everybody knows it, that getting married, filing taxes, joining <laughs> is supposed to be cheaper, right? It's supposed to be that way. Having kids gives you a deduction, it's supposed to be that way. If we got rid of that mindset of people, then maybe they would be able to look past just the traditional family dynamic and be able to, you know, really come into their own. Maslow's triangle of happiness, you know? Hierarchy of needs, what's up? Um, what do you think, like, your demographic would be like? Or do you think liberals would support you or would conservatives support you on this? I think that conservatives better support me on this because they're saving the government money and that ain't their platform, I don't know what is, but um, yeah, and then uh, liberals are definitely into social issues like population control, that's something that they think of. Um, yeah, so I think it appeals to both sides of the aisle. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, questions. I really appreciate you listening.